Amazon has released another new option for us in sponsor display. So I know even last week I covered all of the options in sponsor display. And since then you can see right here, there is a brand new one. So first off, I want to touch on this really quickly. And then what I'm going to do is dive into data from that sponsor display auto targeting option that we had. So I set one of those campaigns up. We spent a lot of money on it and got no traction. So I want to show you guys that before you go crazy with those targets. But first I want to dive into this purchases remarketing. Okay. So again, if you're not super active in sponsored display right now, you should be opening this up almost daily because they keep adding new features and you know, I've been talking about it. All of these features are in the Amazon DSP platform. So Amazon is trying to get you guys to kind of catch up to the to features that other people have in DSP. But you've got to be super careful because a lot of times they release these right before the holidays to get you to spend more money. So that's why I'm going to keep trying testing this out and showing you guys that you don't need to use all of these options and they are all very, very specific based on what your goals are and also what your products are. So this one purchases remarketing. And again, you are only going to find this if you choose the audience targeting option. And then you'll see here before we only had these two options. Now we have purchases remarketing. The best way to think about this is to, you are going to start targeting people that have purchased your product or similar products. Okay. So this is a very, very targeted strategy and it's really not for everyone. So I want to dive into how they explain it. Engage audiences based on the historical purchases behavior during a look back window that you can specify, right? So if we come back over here, we can see that they have also added another feature in here, look backs. Okay. Now the example I'm going to use here is supplements, health supplements, like think subscribe and save products. Okay. If you have a subscribe and save product, let's a, a supplement that you know, people use it every 30 days and then they have to rebuy, right? A really big issue with these sorts of products is you start to lose customers. Let's say they subscribe to your product for six months and then they kind of get sick of it and they forget about it and they stop buying. But this is one of the biggest ways that supplement companies, you know, health and beauty companies build their audience is repeat customers. So the whole point of these is to bring back those customers that probably stopped subscribing from you. Okay. So this one, I, like I, I would suggest going the 30 day look back period because seven days, is just so short and you're not going to really get a lot of good data from that. So if you are doing a look back period here, you want to do 30 days and I want to just jump back in here, reach audiences based on their purchases behavior during a specific window right? If they purchased a product over the past 14 days, then you can target them if they bought the product in the past 14 days. So, I mean, in, we actually do want to have longer look back windows here, but we don't quite have that yet. So that's why I suggest using the longest possible one that you have. Okay. Now, if we're using, you know, what I'm going to do here is actually just pull up a supplement example so we can think about this. Okay. So I'm going to talk about, uh, turmeric curcumin. It's again, this is one of the most popular products on all of Amazon. You've probably seen it before. I've probably mentioned it before right in this bottle. It says 30 day supply. Okay. So you're taking so many capsules a day. It's going to last you 30 days in this purchases remarketing. We have two options here. We have advertised products and related to advertised products. So. If I choose this one, this is going to target people that have purchased my advertised product. Okay. So if they have purchased this turmeric in the past 30 days, I'm going to be retargeting to those people and I'm going to say, Hey, maybe you're, you know, maybe you're running out. Maybe you need to re up on this. Okay. So that's one thing. 
that you can you can use the same exact product that people are buying and get them to keep rebuying it. Now, the other option is if you do have a large catalog, like these people, again, they are they are probably one of the biggest supplement companies on Amazon. You see, they have a bunch of other supplements that go along with their turmeric. So you can say, hey, you've bought our turmeric, right? But maybe you want to buy this elderberry that goes with it. So that's where you can then add the elderberry into that ad group, right? And kind of get those two to work off of each other. So that's what this advertised product is. It's upselling your brand, your brand to your customers and to keep those repeat customers. This other option here related to advertised products is exactly what you're thinking. It's if people have bought your competitors and you want them to buy your product. So this one's pretty tricky, right? Because this is saying that a customer has bought another turmeric in the last 30 days and now you're going to advertise another turmeric to them. So you see how that's pretty tricky there because someone already bought this. They already bought, let's say they bought this one, right? Say they bought this NatureWise turmeric in the last 30 days, but you're saying, hey, mine is a little cheaper. It's got better reviews, okay? So this is very, very tricky to get customers that way. If you're going to build these out, I would strongly suggest starting with this one because again, you're not advertising to people that are just clicking. They're people who have already purchased this. So it's very dangerous. Okay. So just think about that when you're, when you're setting these up. Now, another thing that I want to touch on in this video is the new auto targeting sponsor display option that we have. So I'm going to pull up this campaign here. And you can see last seven days, right? 105 clicks, 600 in spend, no orders, nothing. And I chose a similar to advertise product sponsor display option that we now have when setting up product targeting. Okay. So I want to go back to this. I want to make sure that we are on the same page here, right? So what you do is when you choose product targeting in your sponsor display, this is always going to pop up now. It's basically an auto match targeting for these campaigns. Okay. Anything that says new, you should be afraid of it. So we went super hard on this. I did an $8 bid because this is a very competitive account. You can see, I also have $20 bids up here over hundred 105 clicks with no orders. Now, the thing that's really unfortunate about these is there's no data. There's absolutely no data. You can, you can come into these and you can look at these campaigns and there's nothing here, right? There's nothing that says search terms or, or looking at that. If you, even if you pull a sponsor display report, the sponsor display targeting report, this is what you have. You have your bid optimization, your impressions, and your clicks. You can see right here, this is the only report that I can pull from those 105 clicks. And it's showing me the same exact thing that it showed on the interface, right? So there's nothing here. That's why this is such a waste of money sometimes is because you can't analyze this at all. So if I'm coming back in here, right, and I'm looking at these, there's another really cool option that they've made for us. So now you can see that what I'm, when I set up that campaign, I optimize for page visits because I just, it's new. I wanted to try it. I wanted to see what would happen. And that's where I got those 105 clicks on no orders. But now I can come into this campaign and switch that to conversions right away. So this is where in the next video, I'm hoping you, I can show you this change here from page visits to conversions. Okay. So all I can say here is if you're doing these, I would say do super low bids for page visits because I think they're, they're showing those ads in a lot of pages right now. If you're going for conversions, you can obviously bid a little bit higher. Okay. So a lot more stuff on sponsor display. I'm going to really keep trying to make videos on any new options that come in here. 
And we're also doing our best to set up campaigns for these, get you guys some data so you can see what's working and what's not working.